Good day and welcome. It's actually been a while since I last uploaded a tutorial. However, I'm back and today we are going to begin a series on histology. So, today being the introduction, I'm going to basically focus on answering the following questions. So, firstly, we are going to know what is histology. Next, we are going to look at the steps that are involved in the preparation of tissues. And lastly, we are going to look at the histochemistry of tissue, looking at the general or basic staining methods used in tissue staining. So for this tutorial, I'm going to have some few assumptions here. One, I'm going to assume that you've not done histology before. And two, I'm going to assume that at least you have done biology and you know what is a cell or tissue and those basic stuff. So stay tuned now as we go through this tutorial. Let's get started. So what is a tissue? If you remember from basic biology, group of related cells functioning as a unit constitutes a tissue. And group of tissues leads to the formation of organs, similarly group of organs, an organ system, and an organ system group leads to the formation of an organism. However, for our study of histology, what we are basically focusing on here is the tissue level of this organization. So in simple terms, histology can be defined as the study of the normal tissues and their structures. In doing this study, usually we use an instrument called the microscope. There is, it is important that I make this distinction, right? There is another field that is dedicated to the study of the pathological or disease state of tissue. That's histopathology, meaning the study of the disease state of tissue. This is actually opposite to histology, which has to do with the study of normal tissues and their structure. With that said, now I will ask you a question which I expect that you should be able to answer. Why do we study the normal structure of tissue? You should be able to guess that. So, we now know what histology is all about. It is then prudent that we understand how these tissue are prepared for observation under the microscope. Here we see that there are basically six steps that are involved in the preparation of tissue for the microscopy. What are these steps? Firstly, we have to obtain our tissue, meaning there should be a source of our tissue Next, we have to carry on what is called fixation. Also, we then dehydrate the tissue. We carry out clearing. And also, we have infiltration. And lastly, we carry out embedding. I'm going to go through each of these steps, giving you a basic overview of what they are. But as I stated, these are the basic steps that are involved in the preparation of tissue. You might have other steps being added in your lab, but basically, these are the ones that we're going to focus on. So let's get started, right? First, before we study our tissue, we need to obtain the tissue. 
How do we have this? In histological study, the study, the sources of tissues that are usually used comes from animal sacrifice, slaughterhouse, or cadavers. In other settings, we might also have human samples, right? That might be obtained from surgery or pap smear and so forth. These are the basic ways in which we obtain tissues for the observation or for our examination in the laboratory. Next, we will look at the steps after obtaining our tissue. What do we do with it? Which is fixation. Let's move on. Why do we have to carry on the process of fixation? There are so many benefits, right? But they can be summarized into these three points. The phrase here we look at here is auto lysis. So when a tissue is obtained from its normal source, we want to prevent that tissue from losing its living state. What do I mean? There are cells that make up that tissue, right? So <clears throat> when a tissue is obtained from the normal source and not preserved through this process, what that does is it leads to the breakage of the plasma membrane of cells that are formed within that tissue. And when that happens, the cellular content, that's lysosome and other organelles, are released generally into the tissue. And they will cause the destruction of surrounding cells and generally change the morphology of the tissue as compared to its normal state in the human body or the source that it was gotten from. So we do this to prevent the rotting of tissue. Also, we do this to keep our tissue, as I stated, as close as possible to its living state. And lastly, we do this to prevent our tissue from the harmful effect of subsequent chemicals that will be used in this entire process of preparing our tissue. So those are the major reasons we carry out this process. Also, talking about fixation, there are different types of fixation. Here we have temperature fixation. We usually use heat, but the primary one that is used is freezing metal, right? And lastly, we have the chemical fixation. Usually we use the formaldehyde or the formalin, and others include the glutaraldehyde, right? But this is usually not used because it alters the protein structure of the cells. And mind you, we want to maintain our cells in its normal or living state as closely as possible. Next, we will look at the next step that is involved in this process. So let's move on. Next is dehydration. As the name suggests, this process involves the reduction in the tissue water content. Our aim here is to, of course, preserve our tissue and maintain the living state as closely as possible. So this is usually accomplished by passing the tissue through an increasing concentration of dehydrating agents. And the most common dehydrating agents that are used, we have ethyl alcohol, we have the acetone and the isopropyl alcohol. So, for example, what I'm stating is we have our tissue after carrying on the process of fixation. We then 
pass our true our tissue sorry through 70 percent alcohol next we have our tissue pass through 90 or 95 percent alcohol and finally we pass our tissue through an absolute alcohol so these are just basic steps that are carried out to actually help us in the process of preparing our tissue so we've dehydrated our tissue and we want to remove the dehydrating agent from our tissue that is where this next step or this next step comes into play that's clearing clearing involves the removal of our dehydrating agent alcohol for short in order to have our tissue embedded for the next step there are some few criteria that our clearing agent should possess our clearing agent should be miscible with the dehydrating agent and also it should be miscible with the embedding agent with that, these are some few examples of clearing agents that are widely used. We have the xylene, we have the benzene, the toluene, and the chloroform. Let's now move on to look at the next step of this process of preparing our tissue. Next is the process of embedding, and also we have infiltration here. For embedding, our primary agent we use here for light microscope is the paraffin. And for both the light microscope and the electron microscope, we use the rain or the plastic rinsing for embedding. However, before carrying out the process of embedding, there is another thing that needs to be established here, that's infiltration. Meaning, we need to introduce a particular substance into our tissue that will help in the hardening of our tissue for slicing. The remaining steps here are primarily geared towards making our tissue solid, rigid, slicing in, able, in order for us to be able to observe it under the microscope so the infiltrating agent here mostly paraffin is allowed to diffuse into the tissue for about six to eight hours after all what we have here is the infiltrated tissue is then placed in a box that has melted paraffin wax. After the displacing this box, the paraffin wax is then allowed to harden, thereby providing us with our solid form of tissue that we need to carry on our study. So those are the basic steps and Next, we look at a summary of the processes that are involved in the preparation of our tissue. As we stated first, we obtain our tissue from animal cells or usually from surgery. And after obtaining this tissue, we then have the tissue placed in a chemical. And we say mostly we use the formaldehyde. After the tissue is placed in this chemical, we then dehydrate our tissue by placing it in an increasing concentration of alcohol. Afterward, we carry out the process of clearing, which helps us remove the dehydrating agent we had in our tissue and next we have the process of 
infiltration where we have our tissue being placed in the paraffin wax or in a container that has paraffin wax to allow our tissue to our tissue to be penetrated by paraffin sorry and lastly we place our tissue in a mold that has melted paraffin and allow the paraffin to cool thereby giving all this shape that is now ready for the next process which is section let's move on so after preparing our tissue we now carry on a process known as sectioning this actually helps us cut our tissue into thin slices that enable us to observe the tissues on a microscope Mind you, there are different diameter for different observation, as you will see in your lab. The primary instrument we use for carrying out sessioning is the micro tone. And there are various types or different types that are actually used in carrying out this. So here I show you an image of this instrument. And uh, you might see this in your lab. It is actually a micro tomb and we have different pores, we have the wheel, they have the porting edge and so forth. These are actually pores that help in cutting our tissue into thin slides to enable us to observe the tissue. So we've now obtained the tissue, we've had thin slides of the tissue. What next? Normally tissue, they appear pure, meaning without anything be added, we won't be able to actually distinguish between the boundaries of cells because the tissue, when observed, normally on a microscope they are colorless that's where our study of histochemistry comes in that's the staining of tissues right they are generally an important dye which is a combination of two dye that are used to or that is used to stain tissue that is the Hematosali and the eosin, commonly referred to as the Asian E. These dyes are generally used most time you see it in your lab and so forth in helping us better identify the structure of tissue. Mario, you, there are different types of dye which we will look at as we go on to study the different types of tissue and how they appear on the microscope. So considering the two dyes, as you can see here, what I did, I actually distinguished them, right? The hematosaline is a basic dye, whereas the eosin is an acidic dye. For the hematosaline, they usually react with the acidic components of the cell. That is the nucleic acid, which includes the DNA, RNA, and so forth. So these compounds that react with the basic dye are termed basic or basophilic. Whereas when it comes to the eosin, they usually react with the basic component of the cell that includes the proteins and other basic component in the cytoplasm of the cell. So these protein and other structures that react with the acidic dye are termed acidophilic or eosinophilic. 
it's important to take note of this point, right? Most time I notice student mix this up. But hope I explain it well. The acidic dye reacts with the basic component. And these basic contents are termed acidophilic or isinophilic. Whereas the hematosalin, which is the basic dye, we ask with the acidic components of the cell, and the acidic components are termed the basophilic compound. For coloration, when observed under the microscope, hematosalin will usually provide purple coloration, or sometimes it may be termed a blue purple staining of the tissue, whereas the Eosin will usually provide you with a pink or red coloration. So this is just an example of, of tissue stain, and you can see the purple dye here on the tissue, which shows that these are all the result of the hematosalin. So that is it for our introduction of histology and in subsequent tutorial, we are going to look at the basic types of tissue. Hope this tutorial was helpful. Don't forget to put down your comments below what you think, your questions, suggestions, and allies subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next tutorial.